Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Splinter tutorial, and in this tutorial I am to teach you guys the basics of 3D printing. And 3D printing is a really cool new process where you can turn a 3D object you made on the computer into a physical object made out of plastic or metal material. And you can do it through a number of um, services. I use the service Shapeways. It's relatively cheap. I've been able to print um, maybe two by three centimeter tall figures uh, for under $15 each with shipping. So it's not terribly expensive. It'd be a lot more expensive to purchase your own 3D printer, that's for sure. Um, but um, if there are any other you know, 3D printing services that are out there that are cheaper and that are also good, um, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. But this is the, how you would do a basic 3D printing job. So let's get started. There are a couple things that you have to know about 3D printing. Uh, let's make a little text thing here. So the first thing is that the object has to be uniform. Okay, and what that means is that in your object, you can't have things like this, where two separate geom pieces of geometry are one object. It won't print that. You have to combine them to be all one solid piece so that when you press L over the mesh, everything is highlighted, not just one part of it. So a common example of this is Suzanne. If you were to add in a monkey and tap into edit mode and press L, you can see here that the eyes are a separate piece. They're not uniform. You can see they're little things like this. So you'd have to go in and make sure that was all one piece by combining edges and stuff like that. So let's delete that. We don't want that. And the second thing you have to worry about is mass. Okay. So this object is going to be printed using little filament in a, you know, little, I don't know what you call it, a little uh, machine. I, I don't know how to describe it. But the filament is expensive. And the more you use, the more it's going to cost. So the service actually goes by mass and not by size. Okay, you could have a really, really large object, but have it have have it um, have a very thin wall. It might and it might cost less than using maybe a one or a five by five inch um, cube that's solid. Okay, and what I mean by that is that this object right now is completely solid. Okay, it has no openings or you know anything on it. But if I were to press extrude and then S, Shift, Z, I'll do this again for you guys. But if I were to cut a hole in this and add in a solidify modifier, I would actually be able to give thickness to this object. And the 3D printer is going to use that thickness, and it's just going to print the, part, um, the parts with mass. And it's going to enable it to use a lot lot less filament and it's going to be a lot cheaper like tens or twenties of dollars cheaper so uh, that's another thing you have to consider is thickness and mass and then also you have to consider can it stand okay this object obviously is very simple <laughs> I made it in like two seconds um, but if you have something like a character that you want to pose like this for instance that I made this character I had to put on a little platform, right? Because on its own, you wouldn't be able to, it might not be able to stand, you know, with its head being so big. Um, so I made a little platform. Um, so you have to, you know, make sure that it can stand. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so why don't we get started? So let's check, our object is uniform. It has way too much mass, so let's go in and tab into edit mode. Let me turn on my screencast keys. Let's delete this face. Select it in face select mode and delete face, okay? And tab back out. So now we have a completely hollow object. If we were to center our cursor with Shift-C and do Shift-A, add mesh, cube, we're gonna make a little platform for this guy to stand on. So S and Z, we'll scale it down on the Z axis. 
and then S shift Z, S shift Z will scale it solely on the X and Y axis so that it doesn't get higher as you scale out. So if we were to do that and make it like so and tab into edit mode and add more divisions to this um, object, you'll see why in a minute, uh, we will be able to combine these two objects. So to do that, you have to go to add modifier on your main object, add modifier, boolean. And we're going to do union. And the object is going to be cube, 001. And as you move this down, you can see it adds mesh to it. And we're just going to want it to intersect. Can't really see. Just going to want it to just intersect and not go through. So you can see it doesn't go through. So we're going to click apply. And you'll see it gives us the original object. We're just going to hide that with H. And you can see now we have one object. And if you tab into edit mode, it's been combined. And there are no holes and no double vertices. You could double check with um, selecting everything with A and W, remove doubles. You can see there are no vertices that are doubled. And it perfectly combines them. So if we were then to uh, cut a hole in this, we'd be able to give this all thickness. So that gives us, that takes us to our next part. So we made it able to stand. We deleted the end of this. So this object doesn't have mass, but this object didn't have any holes in it. Okay, the stand doesn't have holes in it. So we have to cut a hole in that stand now to give them both mass because now they're both one object. So tab into edit mode, select one of these faces, uh, I pick them at the bottom, not only because you know it's easiest to select, but it's also where you're not going to see. You're actually going to have a hole in your object when you go to print this. So you're going to want to put it in a place where no one's going to really see it, like at the bottom of it. Okay. So we're going to just select those four, vert four faces, delete faces. And you can see here, we now can see inside of our model. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to add a modifier, solidify. Now there's something we have to keep in mind. But before I move on, I want to explain, I realized I forgot a really important term or a really important part of 3D printing. And that is the complexity of the model. If you have a very high resolution mesh with um, a lot of vertices, for instance, if I were to add a UV sphere and subdivide it a lot of times, well, actually not subdivide it, but um, rather add a subdivision surface modifier and have that be like that. If I were to try to print this, it would be a lot of money because it's so smooth, the printer will have to go back and forth so many different times um, it's just going to cost more, so you have to keep that in mind. You want your objects to be simple if you can. It's another, another thing. So, okay, so now we have to think more in the terms of us being in the real world. So, if you go to the world or the um, scene settings, this little icon right here, you can see here under units, we are now under none, meaning we're in the blender units. If we were to go to metric, you can see here it says meters. Everything now will be in meters. And you use meters just because it's, you know, very commonly accepted and it's one of the, um, it's just accepted by shapeways.com as a unit of measure. So you can see if we were to press N on, in our 3D view, it'll bring up location and if we were to scale uh let's see where are we at transform orientations nope um okay sorry scroll up you see scale if we scale it up and down dimensions right here it's now five meters by four meters tall so if we scale it down you can see it starts getting into centimeters and you know stuff like that um, so you actually, these dimensions right here 
are super important because that's going to directly determine how much your object's going to cost to print. Um, and in the end, we will change it so that it's, you know, centimeters instead of meters large, you know? Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing before, though. Okay. Uh, in the modifier panel, we have a solidify modifier added to this. And you can see it's one centimeter of thickness right now. But we actually only want 0 0.002. And that will give us two millimeters. And two millimeters is the minimum thickness for your object. And it will give you um, an object. And actually, two millimeters is larger than you think. It gives um, a pretty strong object, especially with the material printing in. But if you think you're going to need something stronger, go ahead and increase the thickness to something a little bit bigger. But I wouldn't recommend making it too big because that makes it more expensive because it would be using more material. But now our object has, you can see here, thickness. So we're just going to apply this and go back to the scaling of it. So if we were to press N again to bring up the dimensions, these guys right here, if we were to scale this down, zoom in, you press Shift F to center your camera. Scale down as much as you can. And zoom in again with the middle mouse button. Scale. You can see we're getting to around two centimeters um, you know, wide and long by 1.6 centimeters tall. So that's going to be not very big. You can scale it a little bit more. You could obviously set these. Um, to whatever you know dimension you want. You can do 0 0.03 for three centimeters, 0 0.03 and 0 0.02. That'll give you a three by three by two object. But this is going to you know directly determine how expensive your object will be. So we did that. So we scaled our object down so that it's in our real world parameters now. We're not gonna be able to print a five meter large object. So next what we're going to do is press control A and apply the scale so that the object is one by one by one. So this right now, Blender thinks of this now as the default scaling of this object. And it's just something good to do if you're you know, exporting to you know something real. So now all we have to do really is do file export as STL. And if, and if you check these, you'll see um, Y forward, Z up, and the scale is 1. So that means that our object that was scaled at 1, 1, 1 will now be determined just like so. If we hadn't have done that, it would have thought of it as its normal scale of 1, which would have been a very, very large object, a 5 meter large log object. So that's why we have to apply the scale. So if we were to save this, and if I were to save it as test um, print.sdl, uh, then you'd be able to go to shape, shapeways.com or whatever service accepts an STL file, and you'd be able to print it. So that's basically it. That's the process that you go through to print a 3D object. So I hope this made sense. I hope uh, you guys can print some of your models using this method. Um, it's a kind of complex method, especially since you have to think of it in re real world units um, and also the price. So you might have to go back and adjust some of the parameters or the thickness of your object in order to get it a price that you want or to get it you know, the size that you want. Because I mean, three centimeters is pretty small, but when you're under you know, a $20 budget, that's what you got to do. So um, I hope this was a good tutorial. I, my name is Ben Morgan, and this was how to create a 3D printed object in Blender. Thank you for watching.